This episode of Watch It Played is brought to you by Game On. Looking for great board games? What about role-playing games? And collectible card games? Or miniatures! Find all this and more, plus great prices and friendly service at Game On in Summerside, Prince Edward Island. If you've come to game on Prince Edward Island, then you've got to come to Game On. Welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and of course we begin with our news and updates. The first item is when our characters level up, I forgot to mention they gain another ability called Critical Hit. It's written right on the player card here. It says when you attack and roll a natural 20, you deal plus one damage. So both um, Tarak and Vistra are dwarf have leveled up and they have that ability. The other item is the Rogue's new special, A Daily Power. I'd asked you guys to vote on the two different options, and I must have picked the winner after five minutes of receiving comments, because uh, at that time it was King's Castle, but soon after that, Tomato Strike was... Did I just say... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tornado Strike. Not Tomato Strike. The Tornado Strike, although if there had been a Tomato Strike, I'm sure that would have been the clear winner. Oh shoot. Tornado Strike was the clear winner, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace King's Castle with t Tornado Strike on the board. Oh gosh. <laughs> Alright guys, let's get serious. This is a game after all. Errors and corrections. There were a couple. The first one came from Raleigh. I think a couple other people did mention this as well. Remember this villain, uh, Balax the Goth? It came out, and unlike other monsters, the villains activate during each character's turn, during each player's turn. So this should have acted twice in the last video, and we forgot. So sorry about that. And since this is going to affect Luke's character, Vistra is the one who's in range of the Goth, uh, I think we'll wait until he comes down to uh, go through the turn with him, and he can roll the dice and we'll see what happens. The next correction comes from Black Belt Gaming, the guru of all videos related to Wrath of Asheratalon rules and FAQs. He kindly let us know that that sketchy caller that we had come in in the last episode, you know the one who called from the Watch It Played YouTube internet helpline? The one who suggested that in fact our cleric, by being diagonally adjacent, that is on a corner of a wall, was therefore going to be affected by the Walls of Magma environment card? Well, he was wrong whoever that caller was. Uh, completely wrong. Uh, because on the back of the rules for Wrath of Ashardalon, there's an FAQ related specifically to this card that says that you have to be on the flat edge of a wall. You can't just be on, diagonally touching a wall for it to affect you. So that's good news. So we're going to take a damage point off of Quinn and uh, we're going to screen those calls in the future. Okay, so those were the corrections. Now we can move on to questions and answers. The first one comes from Iron Syndicate and Funky Fox 40. They both want to know, do you only get to collect one treasure card per turn? Yes, you do only get to collect one. Once you've entered into combat during your turn, you defeat a monster, you collect a treasure card, and that's it. If you go on to defeat more monsters, you don't get to collect more treasure cards. The next question I'm going to read from uh, Gecko TH. He was the one who submitted the move last turn. How much monster experience have you accumulated? <laughs> First of all, I'll tell you how much. We have nine experience so far. My first thought when you drew the rolling bowler card was to shout, CANCEL IT! You really shouldn't have shouted, you should have called on the helpline. Then again, the volcanic vapors might be worth cancelling as well. <laughs> so, yes, why haven't I been using the experience points? Is it some kind of elaborate strategy that I've cooked up? I'd like to say yes, but mostly it's because I've been forgetting. Um, actually, when I play, I usually try to keep at least a bank of five experience points set aside in case I roll a 20 and I want to level up one of my characters. However, now that we're at nine experience points, if we can collect one more experience, then we'll be able to spend five to get rid of an encounter card we don't want, and you know, still have enough left over to level a character up. So don't worry, very soon I will be spending those experience points to disable those nasty, nasty encounters. Well, that wraps it up, short and sweet. I'm gonna get Luke, and let's get started with our next turn. So what uh, was it you were saying? T tell me about Heroescape. You were thinking of Heroescape compared to this game. Um. I think Heroescape is good or P 
people, like cool looking people. Better? But yeah. not very much stuff going on, just moving and attacking. And, yeah. Right, the rules aren't as complicated, yeah. it's a little simpler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you like the complicated rules? Yeah, yeah, I like the complicated rules and all the googly monsters. <laughs> but do you think the figures look better? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well there's there's Luke's thoughts on Heroescape versus Wrath of a Shardalon. Uh, now we can begin with our turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually, the first thing you have to do <laughs> is get this villain out to attack. And unfortunately, Luke, it's coming for you. Uh, so here's what we have to do. This is an interesting uh, attack here. The tactics on here say if it's adjacent to a hero, okay, it's not. It says if the goth is within three tiles of a hero, it attacks the hero with the most hit points within range with an eye ray. And so on the bottom of the villain card, there's this table, and we have to roll and see which kind of attack the eye ray does. So roll the dice right here, Luke, and tell me what you got. What'd you get? Uh, 17. 17. So we're, he's going to do an attack that has a plus 8 modifier. So let's roll, and we'll see what the damage is if he hits you. Oh, it's an 18. That's a hit. So it does one damage to you, Luke. Yep. We'll put this on, you put this on your character. And it says, and move the hero one tile away from the goth. This is actually a very good thing. Because otherwise, um, we were going to have to attack you again because we missed mm -hmm. activating the villain twice. So yeah. now the second time that this goth attacks, uh, there's no one within range, mm -hmm. so it's going to move one tile closer. So now it's time for our rogue to act. We had a submission that we chose from Flex Do Right. Thanks, Flex Do Right, for submitting this. What he wants to do is Lucky Strike the Kobold Dragon Shield and then move adjacent to the wizard but stay in the middle of the room so he's not near those hot walls of magma. So let's begin by doing a Lucky Strike here on the Kobold Dragon Shield. You're going to roll the dice, Luke, and we're going to add 7 to it. A 10. <laughs> 10 plus 7 is? Uh, 17. Very good. The AC is 16, so that is a hit. <laughs> And the monster only has a hit point of one, so that's enough to kill it. So we're going to remove this. We only have one Kobold Dragon Shield on the table, so we're going to take that card away, put it in our experience pool. We now have ten experience, and we're going to draw a treasure card. Let's see what he gets. The Wand of Polymorph. Um, use instead of an attack. Choose a monster within two tiles of you. Draw a monster card and replace the original monster. So if you don't like the monster that you have around you, you can just swap it over something else. Um, now, just in case some of you guys are thinking, you cannot use this on villains like our goth, but any other monster you can swap. Is that what you were thinking? Oh, yes. <laughs> Smart, but unfortunately the rules yeah, don't allow it. <laughs> yes, that would help a lot. So who do we want to give this to? Let's think about it for a moment. Well, we talked about it, we thought about it, we don't have a good plan. We wish you were here with us to tell us what to do because I'm not sure who to give this to, really. Um, so let's give it to our rogue. Uh, he's the one who defeated the monster, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to use that later. So now we'll move the rogue. Now, Flex Do Right has chosen a very selfless act for our rogue. Not sure that's entirely within keeping of the character, but we're going to move him adjacent to the uh, wizard. And what's not in keeping is he's putting himself in harm's way, whereas he could stay over here and perhaps loot the rest of the dungeon, uh, perhaps go off and find the dragon himself and steal all the treasure. He's instead coming over here where the volcanic vapors are in this room. And as soon as you enter the room where the volcanic vapors are, you have to take a poison token. So let's give that to our rogue. You want to give that to him? He's been poisoned. And uh, technically, and this is a little funny rules thing I couldn't find anything on, it is the end of our hero phase. And normally, if you're poisoned, you get to test for your poison at the end of the hero phase. So do we get to roll right now? Um, I don't know. Let's go ahead and roll and see what happens. Ten or more. We got a six, so we failed anyway. Uh, but you know, you know what we have though? We have the potion of recovery. Do you want to use that? Sure. We could use this. This is a treasure that we collected earlier, and it allows us to use it any time, and we can end one condition on our hero. This elixir clears the mind and purifies the body. So that allows us to remove the poison condition from our rogue. So we'll discard that treasure card, get rid of the poison, so that was no effect really. Okay, so it's the exploration phase. And because he's not on the edge of a tile, he doesn't get to explore a new room, so instead we're moving right to the villain phase, we're going to draw an encounter card. Thief in the dark. A second thief in our dungeon? You check your pack to discover one of your prized possessions has been stolen. The active hero discards a treasure card. 
If the active hero has no treasure card, discard a treasure token instead. Remember, treasure tokens you use when you're playing a campaign, not a scenario like this. If the active hero has neither, the thief in the dark gets nothing. Well, our thief is carrying a few things. This has actually turned out really good that we've decided to keep the Wand of Polymorph, because otherwise we would have had to remove, what is this item called? The, the Blessed Shield, which gives uh, the thief an AC bonus of plus two, along with everyone else who's on his tile. So let's get rid of that Wand of Polymorph that we picked up. We'll throw that out. The thief in the dungeon stole that from us. We'll discard the encounter card. And now it's the villain, uh, the villain action of the villain phase. Our goth gets to attack again. So this is where I have a bit of a question for our users. I really don't know what to do here, honestly, because although this game doesn't have line of sight rules, um, not specifically anyway, it does mention one thing. It says here that um, you cannot attack a monster within one tile of you if a wall completely blocks paths between your tile and the monster tile. Now it only specifies if it's within one tile of you. So I'm imagining that would be something like you're, you're here, there's a wall, and there's the monster. So you obviously can't attack. But in this scenario, we're around a corner. And the walls still really are blocking our path. It doesn't seem to me like the um, gun ray or eye ray or <laughs> the eye ray that this uh, monster has would be able to hit our heroes. So I, I really don't know whether or not this villain should be attacking or moving closer. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move him one tile closer. If you guys disagree or have a good argument for why um, we should ignore rationality and go with what the rules seem to say, then uh, no problem. We'll correct that in the next turn. We'll just do a, a villain attack on one of these heroes. Sound good? Yep. Okay, so let's move the goth one tile closer, like so. And now we're activating the monster. And <laughs> who's going to activate first? We have some cave bears. Yep. Yes, and there's two of them on here, so both of them are going to activate. This one's the easiest one. Let's do this one first. We're going to move it one tile closer. Put it right there. Okay. And then we have this other cave bear over here. Now let's see what the tactics are on the card. It says if it's on the same tile, which is not. Uh, so if it's within one tile, it's going to move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with a leaping strike. Okay, so it's going to leap and strike. And this is there's two attacks on the cave bear monster, and this is the more lethal one. So we have to roll the dice and add eight to it. Let's roll and see what we get. 14 plus 8 is definitely a hit on our cleric, unfortunately. And that's going to be 2 damage. Like so. And he's now dazed. So our cleric has been dazed. Remember, this means uh, in the cleric's turn, he'll be able to only move or attack and not both. But at the end of that hero phase, he'll be able to remove the dazed condition. So there, our bears have attacked. Now we also have a due guard guard. And where is that? That's here. And because there's no, um, there's no heroes nearby and there's no unexplored edges on the tile that it's on, it's going to move one tile closer. Doing that one from memory. Okay, so that is the end. Assuming we haven't forgotten anything, that is the end of the rogue's turn. And now it's your turn. All right, Luke, it's your hero phase. What happens first? Well, first I'm poisoned. Right. So one damage. One damage from being poisoned. And at the end of your hero phase, you'll get to roll and see if that poisoned condition ends. Okay, so we've given you a little damage from poison, then what do you want to do? Comeback strike. The comeback strike. This is a daily power. A timely strike gives you the strength to fight on. Attack one adjacent monster. If you hit, you regain two hit points. If you miss, don't flip this card over. So it's an attack bonus of seven, and it does two damage if it hits. Go ahead and roll, let's see what happens. You get a 17 plus 7. Yeah. Yeah, that's that a hit. And so you're going to get to do 2 damage, which is enough to kill the, the bear. And so we have to go around the table clockwise. The next person who's holding a cave bear card is Heskin the Wizard. So we will throw that in our experience pool pile. We will remove the model. And you, sir, will collect a fantastic treasure. Staff of the Elements. This ebony staff is topped with a crystal ball that flickers with elemental power. You have to play this item immediately. You gain a plus two bonus to attack rolls when attacking monsters within one tile of you while this is within play. So that's pretty good, isn't it? And you don't have any other cards right now, do you? So what do you think? Should we give this to you or should we give it to somebody who needs help when they attack? 
Okay, so we've talked it over. Luke, why don't you explain to them what we've chosen? We're going to give this treasure to the rogue. Okay, why, why did we think because that? Because he's going to use Tornado Strike. Yeah. And he'll be able to attack four times. Okay, so we want to give him a better chance of being able to hit when he finally uses that Tornado Strike ability. So let's give him the treasure. You go ahead and pass it over there. So you've done your attack. Would you like to move as well? Yep. Okay, so where do you want to move? Up here. You're moving closer to the monsters. Why are you doing that? Because I'm the bravest one of all of them. Because <laughs> you're so brave, of course. Well, I mean, the nice thing about you being closer is if they attack the next closest hero, they're going to attack you. So that is very heroic. And I guess you figure you're, you've got the strongest AC of the bunch here. You can handle it, huh? All right. So it's the end of your hero phase. Why don't you roll and see if this poison condition comes off? A 16. Very nice. Plus, you would have gotten a plus 5 bonus because of your cast iron stomach ability. We'll remove that. Poison counter. Very nice. And now it's the exploration phase. Don't worry, I heard you all calling out Walls of Magma. You're so right, we do have to injure our dwarf who ended the turn next to the Walls of Magma. Sorry about that, Luke. So you now have 5 damage, but thankfully you have 10 hit points. Alright, so now it's the exploration phase, and we're not near the edge of a tile, so we're going to skip right on to the villain phase, and to begin we have to draw an encounter card. It's a new environment card, so this will replace the Walls of Magma, if we decide. Or, what we could do is spend 5 experience and get rid of it. Let's see what it says. The monsters rally to defend the dungeon from invading adventurers. At the end of each villain phase, the active hero passes one monster card, if, she, if he or she has one, to the player on the right. So this is interesting. So basically, uh, you're going to activate your two monsters, and then one of them is going to go to the cleric and activate again next turn. So is that better than the Walls of Magma? Uh... I don't know, I... Uh, I, don't so like, I think it's better than the Walls of Magma. I just want to get rid of both of them. <laughs> I don't think we've ever spent that much time <laughs> trying to figure out what to do with an encounter card. Really, we've spent a lot of time talking about it. I know. About it. <laughs> and we've decided that we are going to replace the Walls of Magma with this High Alert card. This may not be the best decision, but... I don't know, we've discussed every angle we can think of, and we're going to go with this. And so now we need to activate Balax the Goth. Again, he's around the corner from our heroes. So I don't know what to do about this, because I feel like there's a wall that's blocking our path. Um, so I think he should maybe just move, because, it's, you know, how's he going to shoot that eye beam around a corner? What? Uh, sometimes racing some um, shoot, like, walls and then bounce off. That's a good point. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes lasers and things do bounce off of walls. Maybe, maybe that's how we're supposed to look at this. You think? Mm, probably. Probably? Yes. So you think we should have attacked both times? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> well, I'm going to wait and hear what you guys think. You, you guys side with Luke or you side with me? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what you say. I have a feeling I know who they're going to side with. The cute one. <laughs> All right, so we'll put the villain down here, and uh, then we'll activate your monsters. Okay, so you have a snake here. Yep. And it says it's within one tile. It's going to move adjacent to the closest hero, which is you, and it's going to attack. So you roll the dice, add seven, let's see what happens. Seventeen, that's going to hit for sure. And it doesn't do damage to you, but it poisons you. So here you are, you're poisoned. And then the next monster is going to activate is the Gibbering Mather, and it's just going to move one tile closer. Okay, and the last thing we have to do is take care of this High Alert Environment card. You're going to have to share one of your monsters with the next hero in line, which is our Cleric. Who do you want to give that to? Snake. Oh, the snake. How nice of you to share your snake with the Cleric. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of Luke's turn. It's the end of this round. We look forward to seeing what you submit for our Cleric to do in the next video. We'll see ya.